Today, I want to discuss some of the negative topics about growing stuff in Hawaii. Um, you may have run across in the news lately about rat lungworm. Um, rat lungworm has been here on the Big Island for quite a few years now. Um, pretty much we only knew about it here in the southeast corner of the island in Puna uh, originally, but as of late there were some people that showed up with it on Maui and so it hit the national news and it's all over the place now. Um, I am a survivor. Um, I've had the disease once. Don't wish to have it again. It wasn't much fun. Um, it's actually not a disease, it's a parasite. Uh, the whole process began when a particular slug out of Southeast Asia got here into the island uh, that has a habit of consuming rat turds. Um, with the rat turds it picked up a parasite from the rats called lungworm. Um, that parasite then inhabits the slug and it, it, the slug can transmit it to human beings in a couple of different possible ways. The easiest way is, hey, eat one of the slugs. Uh, this also includes a couple of snails we have around here too, like there's a giant African snail here. They say that can carry it. And I have even heard that the freshwater prawn can possibly carry this thing too. Uh, but definitely the semi-slug is the one uh, that we really put our finger on as far as being the worst culprit. Uh, we didn't have this slug here just a few years back. I remember when I first saw it show up. I'm going, uh oh, not another new critter. Uh, it is one of the problems of living in Hawaii. Almost anything that lands here starts spreading. It's just typical. The environment is quite fertile for uh, things to get into. Here he is, the culprit is the Southeast Asian semi-slug. This is the one that's really famous for carrying the rat lungworm. You can see that little uh, kind of half shell in the back. It's not like a toenail. It's uh, halfway between a snail shell and a slug. And that right there is what they look like after we get done working on them. I address every slug personally here on the property. Here are the ants doing their deed, cleaning up the semi-slug. You'll see the little, like a toenail on its back there. That's uh, the shell. That's why they call it a semi-slug. Looks kind of like a snail. The parasite causes issues with human beings. It can't get into the lung like it does with the rat. And it can't live long in the human body. Our immune system kills it off. But it takes a while. And it seems for some reason to colonize right in the uh, lower brain stem, the upper, upper spinal cord uh, is where these parasites seem to end up when they get in your body. Um, it takes the autoimmune system about a month or a month and a half to kill them off. In the process it creates a headache like you just don't ever want to have again and it's a headache that lasts night and day for about a month and a half. That's what I had. Um, with some people, it does develop into uh, permanent neural disorders. Uh, there's been a few really extreme cases have occurred here. For most of us, it's one heck of a headache. Um, in my case, perhaps the worst reaction to it was the amount of painkillers I had to take for the headache ate a hole in my stomach. Um, but. As the headache passed, for me, I did actually experience some neural disorder, too. Um, immediately on the passing of the headache, I lost control over my right arm, my right leg, my right cheek went numb, and so did my right toe. Um, it took a couple of days, and in a few days I regained pretty much complete control of both of my limbs. The uh, numbness in the cheek took much longer to go. The only permanent uh, disorder that I experience from this is that my right toe still does not have the same sense of touch that it did several years ago before I contracted the parasite. Um, it's a little bit numb. Most of the reports on the disease have really kind of blown it 
out of proportion as far as I'm concerned. It's really not that easy to get it. <laughs> Okay, uh, I think the only reason that I contracted it was that I had the bad habit uh, from the mainland of running around and destroying slugs and snails. California is just lousy with the European brown snail, and so I would spend hours sometimes pursuing them, finding them uh, underneath things, in things, and so on, and uh, destroying them. Well, I was doing the same thing here, uh, was not at the time aware of rat lungworm, it was a brand new ailment here, and uh, I had handled these slugs with my bare hands, and then later I probably did this, I probably went in and groomed my mustache or stroked my beard, somehow, you know, sat there going, uh, what do I do next, whatever, if I got my hands right close to my mouth or in my mouth after handling these creatures you know, and that is probably how I contracted it. And so, uh, Since then I am far more cautious uh, when I go after them. Usually I'll use a landscape staple, I skewer them, uh, get the whole stack of slugs on a wire staple and then stick it out in the sun so they turn into slug jerky on a slug kebab. Uh, without really handling them. Uh, nevertheless, I still carefully wash my hands afterwards um, and avoid contact with my mouth. I usually do not do anything else while I'm working on slug patrol. Uh, it's a total focus. Kill slugs. Kill slugs. You know, don't be distracted by the paper boy, the helicopters, or whatever. Uh, you can get it uh, by eating slugs and snails. Um, some people do that. I don't, so I don't have to worry about it. Um, on the other hand, if the slugs and snails are properly cooked, uh, you won't. So when it comes to vegetables, that's one of the ways that people seem to contract it is fresh salad greens. Because if the slugs have crawled across the greens and left a slime trail, the slime trail can vector the parasite. If the trail is relatively fresh, a few hours old, and you are eating the, the greens without washing, cooking, freezing, drying, or some other processing, you can contract the parasite that way. It's not that easy, but it happens. Um, it looks like the folks on Maui, that, that's how they did it. They were eating fresh greens over here. Um, if you follow a few procedures, uh, you'll find that uh, it's almost impossible to actually contract this parasite. But to begin with, if the vegetable is to be peeled or cooked, it's no real concern. If the vegetables are going in the freezer, no problem, okay? Uh, a little bit of freezing takes care of the issue. Um, washing is the main way to go, uh, and you can actually wash the stuff off, even off a head of lettuce, if you're careful. Um, I usually do lettuce, particularly with my hands. The reason I do that is because not only will brushes destroy lettuce, but if there is any slime on there, I can usually detect it. Uh, but typically you will not find some slug slime on a head of lettuce without slug holes, slug droppings, and typically a slug. So my best suggestion is if you go out to the garden and you pull up a head of lettuce and you find there is a slug in the middle of it, I'd get rid of it. Anyway, so that's my approach. I just dump anything that looks questionable. Um, and if it's something that's difficult to wash, like Lettuce is one of the worst culprits. Leafy greens are the worst ones. Um, if it's something difficult to wash, I will usually uh, go to a certain amount of extremes when I'm planning it to see that the slugs cannot get in. One of the simplest things to do is use a copper barrier and grow your lettuce in either hydroponic settings or in tubs filled with potting soil. Let me show you what I've got here next to me. Right here you can see I got a couple of tubs. They're filled up with some delicious greens. And wrapped all around the tubs there is a copper barrier. Now if you keep that copper barrier polished up with some lemon juice or vinegar and a piece of steel wool so it doesn't get all oxidized, this will keep slugs from crossing. Now it's not 100% but it's pretty good. Almost every one of the tubs I've got here in the yard 
um, has these copper barriers on them and they really do work pretty well um, it's it's a pretty good thing particularly as long as you don't get a leaf that touches outside the tub so they can find a different path crops like cabbages are susceptible to these slugs but with a cabbage, even if you eat it raw, we typically peel it down on the outside and so we can tell whether there's been a slug there or not. Um, with broccoli, if slugs get onto it, almost always they're going to chew on the leaf if they chew on it at all. And uh, The uh, main part of the broccoli that we like to eat is the flower stalk. Slugs don't seem to like it. They don't really even seem to like broccoli all that much. Uh, perhaps they're related to the bushes. Uh, George Sr. didn't care for broccoli either. Right behind it there's some white flowers standing up. That's my arugula gone to seed. The arugula I haven't had to worry about protecting out here because the arugula seems to be resistant to the slug. Some slugs don't like arugula much. It's good news. Most of the food you eat is going to be perfectly safe. Um, sometimes these things sort of uh, almost become a, like a superstition. People go into a panic. It's sort of like, you know, GMOs. Somebody realized that they were growing a genetically engineered papaya here on the island, and so, oh man, everything's GMO! Everything's GMO! You know, it, that happens. Well, same with the rat lung worm. Uh, people are in a tizzy. Especially once it hit the national media, I had friends coming back from the mainland going, Bill, are you all right? I understand everybody on the big island's got parasites in their brains, you know. Uh, well, I got a problem with my brain, but I don't think it's from a parasite. Um, the best thing to do with all of this, really, uh, like I said, not all of the produce you're going to eat is in any way uh, a consideration. I mean, a banana's got a peel on it, slugs don't like them anyway, oranges got peels on them, almost all the fruit we eat, we do not eat the, uh, the outside, even if we did, slugs do not generally crawl up the tree and attack abus and stuff like this. Um, that's not too common. Um, Things like string beans, well, we always cook them. You know, when I was talking about broccoli, I, some people eat broccoli raw, and occasionally I have, but usually I prefer mine at least lightly steamed uh, or stir-fried. I find it's tastier that way. So any preparation that has to do with heat and cooking totally eliminates these problems. Um, in the case of something like a tomato, it's got a good skin on the outside, and you can tell whether the slugs tunneled into it. And if they didn't, you just simply wash it off at the sink like you ordinarily would, and you're going to be fine. All right. So it's not like this is easy to get. Again, the leafy greens are the biggest problem, because the slugs like them, they'll get in there, and they're hard to wash. But the whole thing actually starts with the rat because the rat is the one that has the parasite. So, my suggestion is rats are less numerous and much easier to control than slugs and snails. Slugs and snails are pretty tough. You can cut the numbers down or you can get them out of an area for a while, but boy, they're a hard one. Uh, the rat, much, much easier. Sometimes my rat control will go on for mm, 6 or 12 months where I'll have peace from the rats. Uh, there are a lot of other reasons other than rat lungworm that you don't want rats around. Uh, I don't need to elaborate on that. This guy right here is a homemade rat bait station. These work great. This is a PVC pipe, 2 inch, and I got a T with a little piece of pipe with a cap over here. Cap pops off the end so you can load it. Inside, I'm loading up rat bait pellets. Mm, 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 they're delicious. The rats gobble them up, especially the ones with the peanuts. Around here, it seems like peanut rat bait is the top choice. Perhaps there's a shortage of uh, fat and protein in the rats' diets. and So, so I fill, keep these bait stations filled all around the property here uh, to make sure that I'm constantly keeping the rat population knocked down. Um, I've got a couple of feral cats that hang out here. They're allowed. They also keep the rodent population, both mice and rats, baby rats mostly for them, down. Um, and, I mean, the, the rats can create terrible problems otherwise. They actually chewed through uh, the heater core in my car. Mother rat got inside and had babies under the dashboard. Man, was that a mess. Uh, hoo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Um, anyway, so bait the rats.
trap the rats, use victor traps, use glue boards. I prefer the bait stations. They're far less maintenance for me. I just go around every few months and make sure I got good bait inside. Okay. You got no rats, you got no lungworm. And there's a lot of other reasons why you don't want any rats around the house. Uh, as far as the uh, slugs and snails are concerned, of course, most of us know about this stuff. This is Sluggo. Uh, it's an organic snail bait based on iron phosphate. Um, it seems like no matter what kind of a product we got out there, somebody's going to find some kind of hazard. Uh, apparently, some people think this might not be that great for earthworms. I don't know. Uh, I haven't seen any evidence of that, but I haven't conducted any scientific studies on it either. That's Sluggo, and Sluggo is uh, safe near your food, but remember, this is a bait, and so when you're going fishing and you put a worm on a hook or a dough ball or something then you toss it out, uh, there might not have been a fish in the area, but when they sense there's a, something to eat, the fish is going to come for that bait and strike the hook. It's the same stuff. You take this, you dump it on top of your lettuce plant, you're going to get every slug in the neighborhood coming right to that lettuce plant. Because this stuff smells and they can smell it uh, at a distance. And so don't put the baits around what you're trying to protect. Keep them at a distance and put them where you think slugs and snails might be hiding during the daytime. Um, cool, moist, shady, dark places under the mulch, you know, stuff like that. Um, Otherwise, then, out and about, and in places where I'm not really worried about my food, I am using this one. Uh, typically, in the past, I really never did use the methaldehyde bait bases. Um, methaldehyde is pretty lethal stuff. Like if a dog eats it or something, if this could kill your dog. Um, people uh, have accidentally poisoned their dogs with this. In California what would happen is they bait with this for the European brown snail, then let Fido out in the morning, and the dogs, some of them like to eat escargot, and when they find all the dying snails, will gobble them up, and they can get a secondary poisoning from this. Ordinarily the dogs don't eat it directly, but they can eat the poisoned mollusks. Anyway, this one I have taken to using here in Hawaii, particularly because Deadline makes this with a paraffin coating. You see here, this is a blue granule. It's got a waxy base to it, which is different than most of the stuff you find on the mainland. Uh, with this waxy carrier, this bait will actually hold up here under Puna's rainy conditions for up to two weeks. And so uh, it's the way to go when I'm not working around my food for this area. So there you have it. It's all about the rat lungworm. It's also about controlling slugs, snails, and rats, no matter where you happen to live, even if you don't have this parasite. Um, but just wanted to let you know, you may have heard about this problem. It is an issue. You don't want it, but it's not nearly what things get trumped up to be because it's actually pretty easy to control and it's relatively easy to stay away from it. Alrighty, happy gardening, aloha, hang loose folks.